Good evening, everyone. How are you all? Lovely for your company this evening. I can see lots of you on, which is absolutely fabulous. Sunday, 7 p.m. Make sure you share the show. I've got lots to show you. We've got a fantastic, fantastic mini painting class this evening. Is everyone okay? I'll give everyone a couple of minutes just to find us. Maybe tune in and then I'll talk about a couple of the bits and pieces that you all need. And then we'll get straight into some fun. Hopefully... We are all good this evening. It's been a really nice day, hasn't it? So I hope you're all well. I will do a little shout out on all social media platforms because everybody watches everywhere. <laughs> so let me just have a look on here. Let's have a look. Comments are going really fast. Ah, how do you keep up? How do you keep up? Are we all okay? We all had a lovely day. Hi, Tony. Hi, everyone. Right. There we go. Bernadette Galliott. Oh, lovely to see you, sweetheart. Hi, Pat. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Tina. Hi, Brenda. and youtube side of the things hi karen hi sue glynis what have we all been up to today sunday have we all been chilling have we all been working what have we all been doing margaret deborah sue karen I just move these waters for our class you know recipe for disaster you can you can see it can't you, you can absolutely see it hi everyone hi karen shirley rosie marilyn deborah so you've all come to do some painting, have you? Paint the perfect masterpiece. Fingers crossed. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I do have a couple of things to talk you through, though, before we get going. But what I am going to do is I'm going to give you the list of the things that you need to get ready for your painting class. And then, whilst you're grabbing your bits and pieces, you can listen in on the bit of update that I've got for you all in relation to Sarah's show, Funky Fossil and some other bits and pieces as well i've also got a new group that i would like to share with you all as well and as always i always say to you the more groups the merrier share the love of craft get in these groups get the inspiration the owners the group um sort of people who put these groups together do it for a reason so it costs nothing to go in these groups and get all of the lovely inspiration and help that is there for you so go and do it okay when I um, tell you which one I'm recommending today, because as you know, I do try and find groups that are um, supportive, encouraging, want everybody to succeed um, and things like that. And I always find that the groups that I personally recommend, if I can, if I get something out of them, then I know you guys will absolutely do the same as well. So let's just um get my book very quickly so what you're going to need for class ladies and gents is either some watercolor card normal card is fine if you haven't got watercolor card okay you will not get the same results but if you want to craft along and do the painting along until you get some watercolor card that's absolutely fine give it a try anyway don't sit on the couch and can't get a watercolor card that's me out just get some card of some form any will do Oh, sorry, yeah. Caroline, thanks for that. You know, it does help if you turn the music off. Is that any better? Let me know if that's any better. Sorry about that. Like, you know, I should have been dancing, shouldn't I? Liked and shared. Thank you, Nola. Thanks, Myra, Deborah, Jan. Lovely to see you all. Caroline, is that better? Has the music gone? Ta da! <laughs> Just like that. Just like magic. So, watercolour card. You're going to need some watercolours. You don't have to have expensive ones. I've got all the tubes, all the pans, all the watercolours you could possibly imagine. And I always use the same ones. In Studio 1, In Studio 3. I've got some in a craft bag that I take to the caravan if I do the caravan. If I go on a flight, I always take my watercolours and my little journal, which I'm going to use today. A couple of paintbrushes, literally good to go. Okay, I like to look at them. I like to save them. I like to know they're there. They don't all get used, but I'm obsessed with pens, pencils watercolours you all know that so whatever watercolours you've got in your stash uh, whatever watercolours you've got in your stash get them used 
I wouldn't say there's any really bad ones on the in the industry. I think probably most brands have brought decent enough watercolours to get us all started in the very least. So watercolours, watercolour card. You're going to need a brush. Ooh, so I always say size 4. If you have a size 4, size 4, 6, 8. If you've got any of our brushes, you'll have all the brushes you need. A 10. I'll just show you these ones on overhead and then you can at least um, see these ones here. So not massive ones, want to get some lay down of some watercolour and then um, some just some ones for a little bit of detail and things like that, okay? Now you're probably looking at mine and going, how come yours have got silver? <laughs> how come your brushes have got silver, Tony? That's not very fair. That's because when I was sent the samples, if you noticed, can you see the brushes that we actually did were black? Yes, the same hair that are in our blending brushes. The same hair that's going to be in some more brushes coming soon okay so these were the sample brushes but they're absolutely good enough and too good not to use so that's why these ones are like this so this is how they actually came as the sample but in the end they ended up being like this so if you've got them then you're literally good to go okay so you need some brushes um you might need a white gel pen if you have a gel pen um, and you're going to need some form of card look at this you can tell i've done this technique a few times can't you like a gift card old credit card, old bank card, anything that's got a little bit of thickness to it. If you haven't got one of these, grab a piece of cardstock, a thick piece of cardstock and cut it down to the size of a gift card-ish size, okay? If you, and I'm using my watercolour card, Carter A5. Um, I am going to be painting into my journal, which is just one of these inexpensive journals. It's not actually a watercolour book, it's a sketchbook, but I started it as a watercolour book, so I'm going to finish it not to waste it. Um, but we're going to do a little bit of technique based on some watercolour card to get us going. Is that okay? Any questions so far? So while you're all grabbing your bits and pieces, um, get ready. You're going to need two pots of water too. Two pots of water to keep one clean and one to clean your brush, okay? Two pots of water. Easy peasy. So you go and grab your bits and pieces, everyone, and I'll just talk you through some updates that I have um, for you all while you're all grabbing your bits and pieces. I'm probably going to get a lot of people joining a little bit later, which is absolutely fine. So make sure we keep an eye on the comments and let everybody know what they're going to need to craft along. Now, a couple of things that I wanted to just talk about very quickly. So did you all see today's studio with Crafting with Pearly Winks? They launched their new studio today at three o'clock over on their Facebook page. You might want to go and check it out. They've done an absolute fabulous job. Um, and they show you how to use the turnabout stencils and the beautiful sprays that you've all bought from me as well. So if you have the pearly wink sprays or you bought the turnabout stencils from me or you want to know about the turnabout stencils, they did a live show today at three o'clock. If you go to their Facebook page, uh, go and check it out. They've done an incredible job of their studio. Um, you know, they are a cottage brand at the moment. They're growing rapidly, but they're still a cottage brand and to achieve what they've achieved, really with a studio overheads front cameras you know it's just incredible really so if you can show support go and watch the show give them a thumbs up if you enjoy the show maybe get some inspiration on products you might have already in your stash as well oh bridget watched it was it did you enjoy it bridget i managed to watch about 20 minutes then i fell off the back door step and twisted my ankle ah you can imagine i don't even know what i fell over fresh air i don't know i don't know so I'm sat here with a, th a throbbing left foot. Let's have a look. Oh, more of you on here. Wow. Deborah Marley, can't hear anything now. Sound is odd. Keep getting the theme tune. Is it any better now, guys? Hi, Tony all. Hi, Tony all. If you can't really get me on Facebook, do you want to jump onto YouTube? Sometimes it's hit and miss this um, internet malarkey. <laughs> Good to know I have the stencils. Exactly. Let's have a look. Oh, Sue loves their shows. Ouch. I know, I know. So that was one show that I wanted you to catch up on if you've got a bit of free time, you sat on the couch this evening. And then secondly, I just want to tell you about um, another group that we have Craft Friends United, if you remember, and you all love that group. 
and Sharon Noble, the organiser of that group, enables other craft brands to go in, share their makes, videos. It's a really, really fabulous group because on some groups we get a lot of restrictions, but this group is very much like our group. It just shares the love of craft, any questions, all the people in there are really, really helpful. So if you're not in the group Craft Friends United, you need to go and get in that group because it is a fabulous supporting group. But Sharon messaged me this morning and basically said to me, Tony, I've done another group called Colouring Friends United. And I was like, hmm, that's a little... I thought, I thought to myself, hmm, why would you do two groups when the group that you already have is fabulous? So I texted her and said, what, tell me a little bit more about the group. What, what's it about? And her first line had me hooked straight away. She said she's tr created the group to bridge the gap between colouring and crafting because they are two entities. People are so scared of it. And I thought, you just answered my question like that, which is brilliant. So colouring, friends united, okay? And we're trying to get encourage people to use the mediums that they've bought, seen us as demonstrators buy, and incorporate it into their craft. And as you know, Sharon is the most fabulous pencil colourist. And she does lots of tutorials, lots of videos. You can go in and get encouragement from Sharon. She started from nowhere. I started from nowhere. You know, it's just enjoying the love of craft and growing as a colourist. Now, even if you're thinking, I am no good, please still go and join it anyway, because I'm sure there'll be one card in there at one point that will absolutely blow your mind. And you think, yeah, I think I could actually do that. So that one is Colouring Friends United. So after show go and join that group, go and join that group and if you can invite your crafty friends too, as you know these groups don't get any money for groups, with more. it's not a competition if you've got 20,000 or 200 in there, it's absolutely, it makes no odds at all but getting people in the group to get the inspiration where people take the time to you know break things down, do tutorials, give inspiration it, make, it makes me very happy, so I'm sure you'll get a lot out of it. So make sure you go and join that. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about very quickly before we get into our colouring. Joe says, Sharon's colouring is absolutely stunning. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. The last thing I just want to very quickly talk about is a lovely lady's messaged me and she really wants to go on the cruise. And she was wondering if there was anybody else out there who really wanted to go on the cruise too and would like to share a cabin. Now I'm putting it out there because maybe some people then ask the question but there are other ladies who um, would like to go on the cruise who don't want to pay double the money to have a single cabin because it's so expensive for one person. So I'm asking if anybody does want to go on the cruise and he's a bit fearful to ask and say does anybody want to share a cabin, PM me, personal message me and I'll put you in touch with other people who are also interested in sharing a cabin and hopefully we can bridge that gap between you know, paying 4000 for one person or 1500 for each for two people. Does that make sense? And I guess what? You'll make some friends and you get to craft too. So personal message me if you were a little bit scared, thinking nobody will want to share a cabin with me. There are other ladies who have asked the question. So personal message me if you are a single lady or gent uh, and want to share a cabin and I'll see if I can team you up and so you can get in some conversation and we'll get it sorted because I would hate for somebody to sit at home going I ain't got £4,000 to have a cabin to myself and two I don't ask because you know it's a bit weird you know what some people are like it is what it is so oh Linda Chapman's it love the hair Tony I've had it all chopped off Linda what do we think it's made me look older I I think now uh, lady lady Linda Chapman's retiring she's going to be appearing more than we actually think what do we all think good old linda chapman fairy godmother that one <laughs> karen great one on the admin post pinned at the top of the eureka group she's asked if anybody wants to share to pop their name on there so people can message each other thank you karen i should have actually asked you that question so i've just repeated myself for nothing but either or um Karen's always on a, on the ball. Um, either or, get the messages in to somebody and we will um, bridge that gap. Nobody should be left on their own, okay? Right, so that's that. Right, I want to just... Has everybody got all the stuff? Uh, Linda, have you got your watercolours? Have you got your water shoes? Probably like, no, not doing it. Like, Linda, get your watercolours. 
So let's just show you very one quick item um, from the lovely Sarah from Funky Fossil, which is launching on... Now there's a wasp in my room. <laughs> you couldn't make it up, could you? Um, from Sarah from Funky Fossil. Oh, my God. Giddy Ant. I'm not frightened of them, you know, but you know. Oh, did you see it? <laughs> did you see it? Oh, Sunday Night Blues. Oh. So, an item from Funky Fossil, which is launching on Tuesday at one o'clock, exclusive to the How to Craft Network. That is incredibly kind of her to do that. We know that she's on UK TV. We know that she's got her own YouTube channel. Does she have to do exclusivity with Stamps by Me? She absolutely does not. Did she want to? She absolutely did, which is brilliant for us. So you're going to get a taste of something that's absolutely brand, brand new. And I'm going to show you it now. I'm hoping she's actually on. What's flying about? I know. Don't we? It's, we're safe at the moment. We're safe at the moment. So let me show you the... Oh, hang on. It's back. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Right, let me show you what's in this kit that Sarah's put together for Tuesday. Now, I'm giving you a sneak peek. This is just crazy. Oh, I'm giving you an absolute sneak peek right now. But you can't buy it until Tuesday, till Sarah goes live. Now, go and show Sarah support on Tuesday. She did the show by herself week before last. Can remember? She did so good, and she's having to do it again because I'm on telly on Tuesday. So I'm not even here. I'm in Peterborough. So... You know show support sarah she's here so sarah i'm showing your collection now she's like oh, do you have to interfere every time i'm a bit of a giddy kipper sarah i did ask i did ask i wouldn't never not ask and she's like yeah go for it so let's show you what's in this kit if you like butterflies you're gonna absolutely love this liked and shared thank you so much donna Didn't she rock? She's good, isn't she? Right, I don't know what to show you first because it's all quite, I'm not quite giddy. Right, let's show you the stamp set. This is a little bit fancy. A5 stamp set, so you get the beautiful sort of solid butterflies and then the open butterflies. Lovely sentiment, let your imagination take flight. Imagination take flight. Then you get this lovely um, book here and then you get this lovely butterfly with the floral elements on the right and then um the wings on the left without imagination we have no wings it's exclusive to how to craft network this guys so it's a bundle as well and it's at a great price so this is the stamp set i'll just shuffle this one along here then we have a die so again replicated in the die you get the fretwork design on one side and the floral element on here now i'm thinking shaker cards it's got an outline die, so that means you can make shaped cards. The book stamp is genius, isn't it? It's lovely. Um, think about um, creating apertures, building them up, making them look like MDF as well. Crikey, you like this, dear? I'm in wrong trade. <laughs> oh. Looks awesome. I know. Hey, calm, calm down. Calm down. It's available on Tuesday. She's live at one o'clock. So stamp, beautiful, die, another beauty. As always, Funky Fossil stencils. Look at these. And these wings, look at this here. I think if you go right, I'll show you in a second, onto something I'm going to show you on here. And then you turn the stencil over, you'll be able to replicate the design onto MD, this MDF. Now, this is so cool because you're going to be able to do it on the edge of a card if you want to. Or you can build. Look at this here. Create the most gorgeous 3D, 3D butterfly. Look at that. I haven't seen anything, mind you. I don't do MDF, as you all know. So, But I think that is pretty, pretty awesome, don't you? And what I was saying about the... Um, stencil you can stencil some of the design through on here turn your stencil over and you'll be able to replicate it on the left i know isn't it cool isn't it cool you could use it in segments you could put some twine down there and have it as a dangling sort of uh, element from a door or something or you could equally pop it on glue it together properly and pop something inside i don't know like 
let's have a look what I've got. Vaseline. Put your Vaseline on if you want to. Be creative. There are no rules in craft. Trisha Fairclough, question, question, I do a personal message. So you can message us on email, info at stamps by me, if you want to, sweetheart, or Tony Darrick on social media, Facebook page. Totally your call. So that's some MDF that you get in there as well. Equally use as flat entities on their own if you want to as well. I don't think there's any rules at all. Paint them up, gesso them, stencil them, sparkle them, gem them. Do what you love to do. Don't end there though. Look at these. Funky fossil washi tapes. So we have the vintage ones with the lovely sort of beautiful butterflies on here. Now you know Karen, the queen of washi tape on our design team, does some incredible makes with washi tape, layering them, tearing them. Um, so think about tearing these off, putting them down the centre of a page and putting the butterfly on with the raised wings in the middle. Gorgeous. Oh, Pam says, hi, Tony. I'm loving your TC t-shirt, Teresa Collins t-shirt. Yep, absolutely. So I've got um, Unstoppable champion you know because i am unstoppable and i am a champion you know it's a given and then we've got the script and then we've got the words which you can snip into look at this blessed give hope brave spirit these are a lovely lovely combination of washi tape so we'll come in a beautiful bundle one o'clock on tuesday with the lovely sarah she's going to be doing it by herself and then I'm on Create and Craft at 4 o'clock with a new and exclusive with the embossing folder. So if you've got the embossing folder, you'll be able to tune in and get some inspiration. Because I've got a bit of a... I've got a good one. I've got a good demo. I've been doing it today. So that's that lovely. And I wanted to show you. Right, Are we all ready to paint? Have we all got our bits and pieces? Oh, Denise. Denise Rigatano, what a great idea. You could rest your paintbrushes in, look. Oh, don't it get you down when everybody else comes up with better ideas? <laughs> well done, Denise. That is a stinking idea. Well done. Why not? Even, even if you just did them on the edge, look. Gorgeous. Great idea. Can I have this one, please, sir? <laughs> so, let's just pop that to one side. Right, so shall we get straight into demo? So we've all got some what... Right, you need a piece of watercolour card. Let's get cracked straight on. So we're not going to do a painting yet. We're just going to practice a little bit of technique. Get your, your wrist going, okay? Um, watercolours. Look at the state. Watercolours. A brush. So I'm going for size 8. If you're 6, a 4 is absolutely fine fine too okay right so what we're going to do is pick a color well, shall we show you what you're going to paint i'll just get my book to see if i can find it i'll not show you half of these in here they're so bad hang on this one i'm going to paint try this industrial one here look can we see super super easy and it, it comes together quite well as well without you even really knowing about it as well. You could hang earrings on the butterfly. Stop right now. So we're going to attempt this one, okay? But let's just have a little bit of a play with our card and moving some watercolours around on our page before we play. Now, I always say to you, when we do it live, it's your, dry, it's your practice run, okay? Um, try not create... A masterpiece on your first attempt because you'll only be disappointed okay so it's sort of like a dry run so get the technique from me right now play with it a little bit then when we've gone off air have a few practices yourself that's where it starts to come to life and it's the same with our paper craft projects so i always say to you don't use your best papers for our first attempt because it's not until you get off air that you'll probably dig out the best papers because you're confident enough now you know what you're doing you know what your measurements are going to be and now i'm confident to do my best papers it's sort of that sketch okay so use this sort of like half an hour or just over half an hour to get going understand it play with it no rules and then i want to see your masterpieces after which you need to share on our eureka fan page okay so actually i put that there for a little bit of inspiration to help me out a little bit there so let's go back to camera 
So what we're going to do is we're going to mix a colour. So from this one you can see I have like a brown and a blue. Can we see that there? So you need to mix two colours. So I'm going to go with what I've got on here. If you want to do exactly the same, mix some blue and mix some brown. If you haven't got a brown, maybe an orange, you can add a touch of black to make it a little bit rusty in appearance. Okay, so blue and a little bit of orange. In fact, I'll try and keep this in shot a little bit down here so you can see as we go. So all we're going to do, let's, the reason why I asked you to get two is use one to wash your brush so it'll be dirty. When you've washed your brush, you need to lay down some clear water. You've got a clean one. So put the clean one as far away as possible. Far away as possible because I promise you, you'll put your dirty brush in it. So take it as far away as possible and put your dirty brush to clean your brush. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to mix some colour. So let's just go, let's just go with a blue so i'm just going to mix some blue here so what you need is not a thick consistency you need like a puddle you know like what you would find outside your house when it's been raining a puddle so when you pounce you see that there it's just like a a puddle it's not super super thick is anybody nervous phone holder Ronald what a great idea check you lot out right so all we're going to do first of all is we're just going to pop a line down our this piece of card here easy yeah now this is where your surfaces on your cardstock are going to vary on what sort of results you get so now if you take your card and you try and smudge it do you get a smudge okay love that painting you did it's gorgeous no mistakes Tony concentrate you'll all probably go quiet now so again all you're going to do is you're just going to paint a line and then you're just going to take your card and you're just going to drag the color you see how you get two different look you just get a different look every time there's simply no rules so let's do that a few times maybe do a thicker line this time get our card So do a few across the top of the line. So you can see straight away, look, sort of where we got this from. Yeah. So we'll go back in again, add some more colour down the side and drag again. Try this one. So you're just putting lines of colour down, you just drag in with your card, nothing fancy, you're not trying to, trying to create out fancy. I'm flapping, I'm flapping with ideas. Oh. You see, as the, the as the drier the paint gets, you get like a scratchy effect, which is absolutely fine. So that's just a few dragging techniques with our card, okay? So let's just mix some more paint. Get a nice puddle. So this time on our second line clean water we're going to just paint some water onto this page okay so just do a line of water clean clear water you're probably not going to see just get some water down super super easy and now watch what happens when you pick up the color when it's wet okay when you put your line in can you see we put a few lines in. Do you see the difference? So you can see sort of the lines that are in here where the water was laid. Let's just pop another one in. And then if you want to take your card and just experiment, see where it drags like while it's wet, try it. 
See that there? Super easy. Super, super easy. And then you can drop some more colour in if you want down the side whilst you've just dragged it out. Add some definition. And then the water will just do the carrying. You really don't have to worry about it. So these are sort of like your towers. Okay. So you'll have some ink on your card now, won't you? You'll have the ink on your card. So to get the lines in the towers and the detail, how I do it personally is I just take the ink off my palette and I just paint it onto the end of my card. And you get the lines. Can you see that there? So take the the watercolour from your brush and just mess around with some lines. Scratch it. And see what, what sort of lines you get when the water's when the paint's wet. So just experiment with your card, shapes, lines, drag through splatter, absolutely, go for it. You can sort of like, if you thought about it here, I can see a bridge coming here, you know like um, a bit of a Londony bridge type style effect, add a little bit of colour to those. I see all sorts of things. I love abstracts, as you all know. So there's your, there's your masterclass. <laughs> so let's get a proper piece of card now and let's do the full, the real deal. Okay, clean your brush. Clean your brush. Super easy, isn't it? Please don't stay at home saying, I, I'm hoping that the way that I explain it, because obviously I'm not a certified teacher or anything, I'm hoping that the way that I explain it breaks it down and gives you the confidence to, you know, to have a go. Let me just have a look on our other pages as well, make sure nobody's got any questions so far. Crikey. I can't believe how many of you are on Facebook. I say it every time. Oops. Must find it, uh, Facebook a better experience. Right, are we ready to rock and roll? Right, let's do it, let's do it. So we're going for our masterpiece now, okay? Again, quick one. People are going to get different looks for different types of watercolour card. The paper in my book has actually got a little bit of texture, but not a lot. This has got more texture than the one that I just did. So if you get a different look, it's probably not down to you, it's probably down to what you're using. But after we've gone off air, again, grab a few bits of paper, maybe just some super smooth card if you want to, a piece of watercolour card, even try craft card, and see what looks you get on different ones, because the looks are absolutely mind-blowing, and you start to see things coming together, you're like, crikey. So, let's just set this aside, and let's just, I'm just going to go straight to my page on my book here. And I'll do it in my book. So we need to mix an, your colour again, okay, so you need to get a puddle. Are we ready to go? So let's mix our puddle. Make sure everything's in shot so you can see. I'll just move back a bit, see if I can bring this in a little bit better for you. And I'm just going to pull myself to this side a little bit so I can get in with my arm. Okay, is that okay? Can everybody see? Are we ready to go? So let's mix some colour then. So I'm doing mine blue as in the one that you saw originally. So get your puddle mixed and then clean your brush so it's clean. Get a good puddle. Okay. So what we're going to do, first of all,
So with clean, clear water, grabbing my clean here, you're going to paint the top half of your page in water. Okay, top half of your page, clean, clear water. So probably use a bigger brush to get that colour down, uh, get that water down. So clean, clear water to the top half of the page. Super easy. I have to be careful with this because this is actually a sketchbook and it starts to pill. But like I say, I've started it and I'm, I hate waste. So, so I've done it halfway, okay? So the bottom half will be my reflection and the top half is going to be that detail. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up some of the blue. Now, it's a good idea to have a little bit of tissue to hand if you've got any mop-up of water or anything or you need to take the water out of your brush, you know, so it's not got a lot of water in the brush. It's a good idea to have a little bit of tissue maybe in your hand or to the side. So I'm just going to pick up some of this blue here. And as we did on our watercolour card, don't be scared of it. We're just going to do a line to the end of the water. And I'm going to do this... Let's do it three or four, let's do it four times. So different heights. So bob the, bob the blue in. Not symmetrical either. Make sure you leave. So not so the gaps are symmetrical, should we say. You see that there? And then maybe a little one here. So you can see we've got our lines in there. So all you're going to do is just grab your card okay and drag it a little bit now don't worry if you get any ink on the base here because this is all going to get reworked anyway so just take your card and drag it out as like a tower can we see that there if it doesn't drag don't worry about it just pop some more color on it so i'm going to make this a fat one if i can just drag it let it do its thing don't overwork it i look like i've got a wonky tower there so i'm just going to straighten it up a little bit See that there? So you've got your, you've got your blue towers already. So whilst it's a little bit wet, <laughs> whilst it's a little bit wet, I'm just going to take some more blue. I'm just going to add some more down one side, like we did before, just where we started. And this is just going to give us a little bit of light and shade, nothing fancy. See that there? So again, if you want to drag it again. Super, super cool. So easy. Try and get them straight if you can. Doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but straight-ish, okay? So clean your brush. And now I'm going to mix some brown, brownie orange, okay? So we're going. I'm going for that rustic-y sort of industrial feel here. So I'm just mixing another puddle. Same consistency, just another puddle. And I'm going to do the same with the brown, okay? So I'm going to try and get into some of the spaces. I need to be quick because this card looks like it's drying. So let's pop one down here. It is drying, you can see, can't it? But I'm okay with it. And then one here. And maybe one here. Like so, and then get my card and try and drag it. Hopefully it'll drag a little bit. It has. Perfect. Drag it and then drag it. And if you have to make a thick one, if you want to make a thick one, don't be afraid to take it into the blue either so it looks like they're connecting. Let's add a bit more to this one. see it coming together you get in your background super easy let's get one in here and we'll get a thin one in here look so far so good <laughs> so let's just mix another color so this time we're going to mix black
and we're going to put some black towers in too okay so let's go maybe one here one at the side of this brown one and maybe one here and then I'm just going to take my card and drag it again So far, so good. It's looking good, isn't it? It's super easy, this technique. Super easy. So they're sort of our backgroundy ones that are in the background with no sort of detail or anything. So I would take um, your brush now, add some splats with clean, clear water. And then just let it settle. And we'll come back to it. So now what we need to do is we need to do our base and we sort of need to reflect the colour down which is really really easy. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my bigger brush get that, and clean clear water okay. So just leave, let that do its magic, we're not fussed about what, what it does. And then we're going to take some clean clear water at the base. I'm going to put some water down here. So this is where we sort of need to get that lovely reflection. Okay so water. If you start, if your card starts to pill, try not to uh, um, massage it anymore. Like this is a little bit. So there we go. Okay. So all we're going to do now is the colour that we've got in our palette. We're going to sort of spot it in. So let's start with the blue. So I'm going to pick up some blue, and I'm just going to sort of spot it in below. See that there? And I'm going to, I've got this reflection, so I'm just going to spot it in. I'm just going to spot it in. Let me see. And then here. It doesn't have to be as dark in some places as it is in others, because light would be coming from all sorts of areas. And then down here. like so and then let's spot our orange in sorry our brown pounds 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 drag scratch whatever's you're comfortable okay and then our black super easy hey so then <laughs> are we all are we all enjoying it so far i'm not going to distract you i'm not going to ask you to comment don't comment let's crack on so then all i'm going to do is i'm just going to mix some more black here okay whilst the card's wet and i'm just going to paint the edge of my card my grotty card could do with a new one really and all I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of put a line in here to separate the sort of ground to the reflection, okay? It will bleed. Don't worry about it. See that there? So you can see it's going to quickly come together. Super cool. Now, it's really a case of just whilst the card is a little bit wet, um, having fun. So all I'm going to do really is I'm just going to use some of the black... I'm just going to pop it on and drag. You see that there? So sort of like just add the colour to the side of the card and where you think you want to fill a gap, don't fill all the gaps though because when you have some areas that are not filled it looks really cool. Okay, so I'll just use a bit of black up here. You see, so you sort of like instantly get that reflection. And then I think... We need to make it look more industrial so I'm going to pop 
um, some lines in. So I'm going to pop a line in, a single line. And then I'm going to just pop a light one in there so it just sort of like separates it a little bit. So basically now it's time to be creative with the card. So get the ink on the side of the card and sort of like frame your buildings. So you don't want to edge them like so they're all fully edged, like symmetrical like this. Just like randomly, it's first and second generation with your card. And sort of edge the buildings. See how we get a double line on some of the buildings as well? Super easy. And then maybe think about there would be some cranes maybe. Um, like going the other way. Maybe a little bit down. So it's, it's so, I tell you, it just comes together so quickly. So get as many lines in as you want when you're happy. You can even top some of them if you want to cap the top of some of the buildings as well. I like the, the very fact that it's free. But then... I like to then go back in with some colour, maybe just on half of the card. And I like to get some buildings which are like really bold, if you can get that colour on there. Maybe take the colour direct from the pan onto your card and really get the darker ones in. Try and get that a little bit darker. See how you get some darker ones in? It's like painting with a card, it's so cool. And that's where you start to get that really brisk edge. Sort of like gives you um, perspective. Swap out the colour. Maybe do a brown one. How's it all going? I'm not. Don't answer. I hope you're all enjoying yourself. You're not answering or talking to me, which is good. Everyone good? Gym card. Joe. Joe's like, gym card, I'm going to use my gym card. I'm just going to go back and just see if I did put, I did, yeah. That's fine. So in the base... Back onto it. I just wanted to just go double check and see if I'd used any more colours on my um, thing and I have. So I'm going to mix a little bit of green here and I'm just going to, this is still wet on the base so I'm getting, I can get a little bit of colour in the base here. So if you do want to incorporate another colour you can absolutely incorporate another colour. Just have, fu have fun with it guys, I don't think there's any rules. Filling in some of the gaps with a little bit of green here. I can't wait to see what you've all done like so and then because this is a reflection we need some more black on here so let's get some black mixed so hopefully you're all just enjoying it like so and then what we need to do here is you need sort of like need to lift your project up you need to go underneath that line it'll still be a little bit wet and it will start to bleed like so and then you just need to wash your brush get the clean clear water on your brush and sort of like drag it down and this is where it sort of like murkies up the base part and makes it look like a reflection don't worry if it bleeds into the top piece of your artwork either because um, you can tidy that up so I'm just getting my wet brush and I'm just encouraging that black to come down just to sort of like muddy because it's too sterile it doesn't look like a reflection at the moment you see that there and if you get a little puddle here just get your tissue and just mop that up so I'm going to add some more black in there 
hold your book or paper on an angle if you can and let it run into that water. Don't give up on it though. Stay true to the end, everyone. Try not to get a harsh black line, so keep adding the water. Pounce, pounce, pounce all the way across, let it bleed down. You know, so it's sort of like... Still got your detail in the base. Keep adding the black, adding the black, adding the black. <laughs> Shaz, I've been amazed by this. Oh, bless you. I'm like, I can't wait to see what you're all going to do. So I'm just adding that black, adding that black, adding that black. I would like it a bit lower if I'm completely honest. If you start getting crumples in your um, artwork, don't worry about it. It'll flatten. So I'll just keep pounds, pounds, pounds. So now we need to get some really like true black lines in here now. So I really need to sort of, you can do, there's a couple of ways you can do this. So you can mix some thicker black. So take your black heel up, pop it on a glass mat or on your a flat surface here. So I'm going to do it, try, try and do it quite thick. Okay. Then I'm going to take my card and I'm going to add more black lines and what will happen is because this bit's wet at the base it'll just fade out okay so let's drag that out a little bit so basically i'm lining and dragging trying to get it all to come together angle So I've put those lines in now, sort of like framed it a little bit. Don't be afraid to put some other lines in the base as well for the reflection to come down. Just light ones. And then, to sort of like enhance it a little bit, if you go back to your colour palette here where you've got the colour on here, so you need less water in your brush, so take the water out of your brush, pick up some colour and sort of like add some definition to the sides of the buildings. So paint like one side in. If it's still wet it'll just naturally bleed, but paint some of the definition back in from the buildings that you've lost. And if you've got harsh lines, just take the water out of your brush. Go back in and blend it out. See that here? And then the extra brown. It needs a lot more lines and it needs a lot more black as well but it's down to basically playing with it now and you're putting your lines in where you want now a couple of quick things i just want to tell you about before i let you just carry on and play yourselves 
because you could you can play all night honestly you can have so much fun so whilst you've got some blue on everything in your mat add the splats add them in the water at the base because it's still a little bit wet and then add some in the top too i'm just sorry i'm just doing this so it don't go all over my technology so we've got some blue ones in there and then when you start to add the splats it sort of like fills in those little recesses and it starts to come to life quite quickly so add the splats in areas particularly in the water because that's where you're going to get that like fuzzy like as if it is reflecting now i will finish this and add some more like height i need some black lines that go higher as if they're like what those ones that people climb up on um like industrial estates and things like that i'm going to just add some more splats with this one and you can also go in with your fine liner pen and define it even further because i think actually let me just check if that's what i did with mine got some lines in the water here look fine liner pen something with a straight edge piece of card maybe obviously wait till it's dry but a piece of card and then sort of like um, put some fine lines in as well and this is where it all starts to come a little bit arty that's a grey that's no good can we see there starting to or if you've got a free hand and you just want to go in and add but I think I need to get some more black lines on here. Now, the last thing you need to do is your white gel pen. I have posted this picture on social media, remember? So you'll be the one that we did, I did in my own time, which took me about 45 minutes, um, where I've used a white gel pen as well, and I've added lines into the water with a gel pen, which are white, and lines going across in black. don't think it'll work because it's wet. No, it's not working, but adding the white lines with a ruler really make it come to life now i'm still not happy with this base here and i would probably faff and faff and faff get it all to come a bit lower but it literally is your masterpiece and you can do as you please add some black in there too keep playing and playing moving the water around playing with the color on there as well use your gel pens use your fine liner pens get some industry shapes in there like like industry you know what i mean don't you oh there we go what do y'all think karen there's two pictures there's two they're everywhere pictures karen they're on social media on my facebook page as well and everybody shared the post which is in the eureka fan page too so you know screen grab or save the photo to your things and then you can play around with it because i did do one in red as well but it didn't quite turn out as good as that one so let me find that one i was too heavy with the color and i filled the whole base look here can you see i filled the whole base and i didn't like it can you see the big splats though so you know the encouragement is there with the light this is your white gel pen lines down in the water lines at the top splats and that's the blue one so i didn't actually put the color all in across the base there but you can see lines splats a couple of lines in here the gel pen i've even done the gel pen going that way look can you see so absolutely play around with um the colors and things that you have in your stash i hope you've enjoyed that and i hope it's something you'll give it a go it is super easy do it two or three times do it in a variation of colors and just see how you get on it's a piece of card and it's an hour of your time what you know nothing bad's happened it, hopefully you'll have enjoyed the process and the encouragement was there to pick up that brush i am going to revisit that i'm going to let it dry though and if you find all your colors are blending into one and you're ending up with a hot mess dry it off with your heat tool okay dry it off with your heat tool and um 
then start layering more colour on top and you'll get instant like perspective foreground and background okay so all good all good don't forget you can go back and watch this pause it rewind it mute me play ask any questions um i am going to give um one of the pictures away that i have painted in my book so all you need to do is pop a comment underneath this video uh, and i'll send a picture off to you from one that i've just played with myself in my book so thank you so much for a lovely sunday evening i hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have i always love painting as you know we would we do painting and we do paper craft as well so it's always a lovely place to come and say hello have a bit of downtime a bit of breathing space it's sunday ready for the week ahead tomorrow so whatever you're doing have a lovely evening great demo fantastic time oh i'm glad i'm glad and it's a distraction from everyday life isn't it and my sprained ankle okay so i will see you all tuesday on create and craft tv at 4 p.m have a lovely evening guys see you all later bye because it concentration